Lisboa, fim da época balnear, ou seja, o fim do inverno, só estão 29, 30 graus e o começo do calor mesmo a sério. A altura, pois, que os turistas regressam às suas casas para só voltar em dezembro, para a altura do Natal. Mas fim da época balnear também significa início da primavera, festejado por todas as comunidades de Goa, não só hindus, muçulmanos, mas como também católicos. A celebração da Páscoa em Goa tem um grande impacto na sociedade. Sexta-feira Santa, por exemplo, é um feriado público em Goa, mas nesse dia ainda a comunidade hindu vem prestar a sua homenagem a Cristo Jesus. Nesta minha igreja mesmo sucedeu outro dia que um grupo de, de hindus, eu dei-lhes a permissão de eles se dirigirem à comunidade dentro da igreja e vieram com uma mensagem tão bonita. O que é que a morte de Cristo significa para eles? E depois, à sua maneira, prestaram a sua homenagem cantando um bhajan, em honra de Cristo Jesus. E toda a nossa comunidade, eu já os tinha preparado, ouviu tudo aquilo que eles diziam com uma grande atenção. Mas não é só esta convivência entre as várias comunidades que existem em Goa, como a comunidade católica, a comunidade hindu, a comunidade islâmica, podemos sentir também esta convivência, esta coabitação dentro das próprias igrejas católicas nomeadamente uma coabitação entre ícones claramente bizantinos, como temos aqui a Nossa Senhora do Pé de Socorro, como também ícones católicos. Há muita coisa, digamos, do nosso, da nossa ancestralidade, digamos, hindu, aqui em Goa. Bem, neste momento lembro-me, por exemplo, nestes vários festivais que há, festa da Nossa Senhora dos Milagres em Mapsá. Os hindus vêm lá e os cristãos aceitam muito bem os hindus naquelas práticas que há de oferecer óleo, dar banhos de óleos à estátua da Nossa Senhora dos Milagres. E depois, na nossa igreja, a prática mais comum é levar colares de flores, de abulins. Muita maneira do que é na nossa sociedade. Uh, hindus, cristãos, sempre a bolinha é uma flor uh, de que se fazem colares e trazem-se colares oferecem cá. Há mais uma coisa que, de que me lembro uh, muito bem. É, no dia da procissão, sai a procissão do Senhor morto e os cristãos passam debaixo do andor do Senhor. É como se receber a graça Debaixo, sobre a sua cabeça, ou não quer, sujeitar-se à graça de Deus, Nosso Senhor. E os hindus, tão bem, quando a procissão passa aqui pela, pela, pela cidade, tão bem, a procissão para em certos momentos. E os hindus da área passam debaixo do andor do Senhor. E pronto, oferecem esta, estas flores, muito incenso de novo. E depois, de novo, eu diria, quando vem, por exemplo, beijar o Senhor morto ou o Senhor com a cruz às costas, a maneira ocidental é sempre ir a beijar a estátua, não? Mas aqui em Goa, beija-se muito a maneira dos hindus. É, Leva-se a mão à estátua e dali a mão vem depois à, à boca, de modo que beija-se desta maneira. E assim, há certos, digamos, resquícios, se se pode dizer, deste nosso passado hindu, que é muito parte do nosso culto, da nossa maneira de funcionar na igreja. A Páscoa este ano foi a grande celebração da chegada da primavera, coincidindo com a ressurreição de Cristo e o nascimento de Maomé.
عید میلاد جسے ہم کہتے ہیں وہ ہمارے نبی جناب محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم کی پیدائش ہے یعنی حضور صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم جس روز یا جس تاریخ کو پیدا ہوئے مسلمان اس خوشی کے اندر جو ہے اپنے نبی صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم کا جلوس نکالتا ہے Estamos num templo hindu, o templo de Hanuman. Esta é uma altura em que há muitos festivais hindus, nomeadamente o Holi, que serve para afastar o mal das aldeias. Faz-se umas grandes fogueiras, normalmente fora da aldeia, exatamente para tentar libertar todo o mal que atormenta essa aldeia. E cinco dias depois, que as pessoas têm que descansar, há então o Rang Pachami. Rang significa cor. Portanto, todas as pessoas se juntam, é uma explosão de alegria em que todos atiram cores umas às outras, dançam, tocam tambores, para festejar então o fim desse mal. योगायोगन की तरह लाइक गुड फ्राइडे हम चे ईद का है अने इंदुन चे हैं और जैसे सगड़े बरोबर आए लें पर किधर ऐसा हम चे भगवत गीता किधर संता भगवान गोपाल कृष्ण किधर संता कि सगड़े धर्मों सगड़े धर्मान सब मोड़ पाया है कुछ ऐसा सर्व धर्मान परित्यज्य जो माँ में कम शरण मजो माँ तो देव एक कुछ ऐसा Feels good. Goa é uma sociedade marcada pelo multiculturalismo, bem difícil de se encontrar noutras sociedades. A Nuts Timbló é um jovem que nos fala com orgulho das suas raízes portuguesas e também indianas. Nesta Páscoa veio dos Estados Unidos para visitar a sua família. Entrevistámo e ficamos a conhecer um pouco mais sobre esta mistura de culturas. Goa has always been amused to me. Ever since I started playing guitar and getting more into music, um, coming back to Goa was, was what I always looked forward to because it, there was some, there's something in the air, there's something in the sea breeze from the Arabian Sea, the, the, the feeling you get when you look out into the ocean that you don't get anywhere else, at least for me. Um, the multicultural aspect can be smelt almost. So being in Goa, having that multicultural approach, you know, I'm not really, when I, when I tell people I'm from Goa and I'm in America, they, they, um, they don't think about the British, they think about the Portuguese, of course the ones who do know about Goa. Um, they think about the Portuguese influence and then they, they ask me questions about what it's like now. And so uh, with my, my mother's um, influence in Hindi, and, and uh, Indian music, and then just Goa's influence on Western and specifically uh, Portuguese influenced music, it's, it's really uh, been a melting pot for me. And, um, and yeah, it's been a muse for me. And, and especially the, um, just the encouragement that I've, I've received, you know, most business families, God, I'd be the, I'd be the, the black sheep if I was, if, you know, I would go up to my family. If I had gone up, if I was born to any other business family and I went up and said, you know, mom, dad, I need to be, I, music is my calling. They would be like, read your math book and come back home because we're not letting you do that. Um, this family has been a godsend for me, um, especially my mom and dad's open-mindedness to my career and what I, what I saw myself doing. When, I'm, when I meet people in America and they know I'm, they find out I'm Indian, their first question is, are you a computer scientist? Are you a businessman? And sadly, well, not sadly enough, but, but, but much to their, um, I wouldn't say chagrin, but they're surprised when they hear me say I'm a musician. And, their first reaction is, how were you 
given that opportunity to come 10,000 miles away from your home um, to play music and to write music and to release it and to tour this country or tour other, other, other parts of the world? A resposta, apesar de tudo, não é assim tão simples. A Nudes Timbló nasceu no seio de uma família muito especial. Seguindo uma tradição familiar já bem antiga do tempo do seu avô, nos anos 50, de querer estar ligado ao mundo através da exploração mineira e do turismo, a Nus, de certa forma, seguiu os passos do avô. Com o apoio dos pais, foi à busca do mundo através da música. As a result of the mineral uh, requirement of the world, uh, it looked at that time, at my father's time, that when he was uh, in his 20s, uh, that uh, it was uh, sensible to be part of this uh, growth story. And he plunged into mineral development. Um, after liberation, one could see uh, Goa attracting tourists. I was uh, very fortunate to have been here when organized tourism started in Goa in a very small way. Before that, I have memories of my friends in Bombay telling me how they go for their holidays to Goa. They would stay with families in Goa. And that is because Goans are hospitable by nature. They are warm and they welcome people. And that's what began tourism for Goa. Uh, we felt that it would be good to diversify. We had been in the mineral industry for a long time. And with the, with the potential in tourism and tourism developing in Goa, we felt it would be a good idea to diversify and enter into the tourism industry. And that's how we embarked and uh, built a resort first with 104 rooms in 1983 and then we expanded it in 1992 and our first guest was Mario Suarez who occupied Siddharth de Goa. That was the opening of our expanded hotel and since then we have been in this business and it's uh, very very uh, encouraging and motivating because it carries with you so many people who work with you to take care of the visitors to Goa and uh, it's growing and it'll grow and we will together make it a good destination in the world. Uh, and again, uh, so these are our two main uh, activities, uh, the mineral activity and, and the tourism activity. Uh, the family uh, took its steps, uh, of course, uh, uh, basically behind these two activities is a great power of a, a human resource team. And uh, whenever a good, uh, uh, whenever a family member displays ability, uh, he uh, has uh, an option to be part of the business. And when that happens, uh, education counts, uh, ability, skill, and, and, and dedication to work. So in, in a growth uh, situation for Goa, and particularly in our mineral, and we are always short of people. And if you can find them in your family, why not? And, um, and this has gone to the third generation now. Unlike my parents, I'm sadly enough an artist and it um, comes with its, you know, it comes with its uh, baggage. And, um, but the, the, the good thing about it is that I have my parents' business minds to, to influence me in a way that many other artists don't and other artists fall into a sometimes into a vicious cycle of, of, um, of not really knowing what, what, the, what the business side of music is all about and just really being jaded about the business side of music. such an important situation uh, before the World War II. It's only after the Second World War 
uh, when uh, trade became more liberal uh, uh, with uh, Europe and Japan, and uh, the the hunger and the thirst for uh, minerals was uh, very uh, was very much there. That's when the Goan mineral industry uh, began developing, from a completely a farming community, um, almost just 200,000 people in the whole of Goa, uh, totally based on, on uh, remittances of Goans working in, uh, in uh, Africa or Goans working in Bombay or Goans working in Portugal. We sprang to life as a result of this uh, mineral uh, uh, activity which uh, was propelled more out of European uh, redevelopment, the Marshall Plans and, and Japanese uh, uh, restructuring uh, out of uh, their economies, both supported by the U.S. Um, and the free markets uh, started taking root. And uh, I think Dr. Salazar, who, who must have been a very sharp economist because he was an economist to start with, uh, he felt that uh, reforms in mineral laws and uh, trade should, uh, should be given a uh, good opportunity. And that's when uh, Goa uh, exhibited large growth rates, um, exports, more employment, and creation of wealth. Mining leases were given rather freely, and so enterprising people stepped in to uh, start the mining activity. Um, and when we had such good uh, activity that Goa could import just about everything it needed out of its own um, trade surpluses. Every year we had trade surpluses which permitted us to import everything from cheese to shoes to shirts and textiles to cars and and machineries and, and uh, paints and cement and there was not a single thing that Goa manufactured yet it could bring from outside and that's what uh, made Goa rather prosperous. Everyone became materially happy. Uh, uh, salary uh, w w were increasing but buying power was increasing even more and, uh, and um, uh, Goa was standing on its own feet. É curioso verificar que, perante o corte abrupto que houve entre a administração portuguesa e a administração indiana, as mesmas famílias que controlavam a economia de Goa nesse tempo continuaram no poder. Uma dessas famílias foi a família Timbló. Como é que isto foi possível, Mr. Timbló? I would uh, just say that we were lucky to get the attention of the, the then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru. Uh, a delegation went to, uh, to meet him to say, please don't change our way of life. And he did pronounce to the press and to the Goans, and particularly when he visited Goa in 1963, he says, I am not going to nationalize, canalize Goan trade, which meant export of iron ore. And that's the reason why when the rest of India was canalized and nationalized through the government channels, Goa was left free purely because the Prime Minister gave his word. 1964, a year later, exactly in the same month he died, but his word was good enough because he was a giant of his time. And that word saved us or diluted the efforts of the, of the protectionism that the same Prime Minister had set into motion for the rest of the country. So we got a special dispensation, a special favor from Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and we were not touched that much by the central uh, mechanisms that came into existence into India in the 50s, uh, um, multiplied in the 60s, uh, exponentially rose in the 70s and brought India to its knees at end of 80s vis-a-vis uh, -vis our balance of payments and, and the reserves in 1991, foreign exchange reserves were just half billion dollars and today they have crossed they are almost going to be touching 300 billion dollars i think it's crossed 200 billion dollars quando fomos visitar as minas da família Timbló surpreendeu-nos o nome que encontramos logo junto ao portão Sociedade Fomento Industrial de facto podemos encontrar em Goa muitas ruas com nomes em português 
Mas o que nunca esperávamos é encontrar um logotipo de uma das principais empresas indianas inalterado desde a sua fundação nos anos 50. To appreciate the transition from uh, the Portuguese regime, uh, liberation and thereafter, you will have to appreciate what India was in the, in the 60s, early 60s, mid 60s and even in 70s. It was an India of protectionism. It was an India of restrictions. It was an India where trade was more or less canalized by government owned organizations. Uh, But since 1991, that India has, is being slowly disbanded to an India which is uh, trade friendly, which is outward looking, wherein restrictions are being, uh, uh, have been removed and are being removed continuously to make us uh, more internationally competitive. So between 1961 and 1991, we had to struggle to keep the products competitive in the world market but we were blessed in Goa by uh, the uh, mineral uh, sources and the great uh, infrastructure laid by the by, by God himself called River Zuari and the River Mandovi and that's what gave us a cost advantage and that's what kept Goa alive uh, and, and fairly uh, on track until 1991 liberalization free imports um, the less duties uh, and uh, ability to catch up with the rest of the world were available. There are out of 1.4 million uh, people, there are half a million mobile cellular connections. Now that's, uh, that's even, uh, that, that's, I, would do, I don't know what's the United States uh, statistics, but that may be quite equal to the United States. It's fairly, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the handcuffs are off, not entirely, but they're, they're slowly they are getting further released and we are becoming a more and more internationally competitive. Iron ore industry uh, has uh, kept its uh, role. It has grown, uh, uh, since 1991, it has grown 300%. Uh, the, the growth in tourism industry of which uh, uh, my family is a part of, They are also growing. Um, the arrival of the direct flights from Europe to Goa, that's one more freedom that is being given. Um, the uh, airport is now uh, open for 24 hours. So all these uh, shackles have been removed from time to time and you know, Goa is, is marching ahead. Uh, for which uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, ground to progress further is very well fertile now and what we find is that uh, this is causing good opportunity giving good opportunities for employment and so on yes it has its associated problems uh, employment uh, for employment uh, you tend to get immigrants into goa and that is uh, uh, disturbing the balance from time to time again and uh, you have a certain anonymity which steps in which needs to be managed by the administration and others to make us uh, more competitive. But along with this more competition comes challenges. And now this is a new Goa where the population has gone from 200,000, what I mentioned uh, at the time of uh, um, post-World War II, now 1.4 million. So it's seven times in, in 60, 70 years. Ficámos com uma ideia muito interessante sobre o crescimento de Goa desde os anos 50, quando Salazar concedeu a exploração mineira a jovens empresários como seu pai. Também podemos depreender pelas suas palavras que Goa é um Estado rico. Acha que isso se deve ao boom da expansão económica indiana, que se lê todos os dias nos jornais? Ou será que Goa conseguiu construir a sua própria identidade 
quase como uma ilha uh, escondida entre outros estados tão grandes como Maharashtra ou Uttar Pradesh. Uh, to, uh, to relate it to the rest of India, uh, yes, it is a state uh, which has just uh, 1.4 million people. Then you have states like uh, UP and Maharashtra which have 50, 60, 70 million people. So really speaking, what's Maharashtra? 40 Goa in, inside it. So to compare Goa to another large uh, mass of a, called a state, that would not be an adequate comparison. Goa, I would say, is a geographical region of 1.3, 1.4 million people who are wealthier than any other state in the country. Espero que tenham gostado de estar aqui connosco em Goa. Daqui a 15 dias, cá estaremos outra vez. Tchau!